Shalom Aleichem everybody, hope all is well. Uh, Erev Parshas B'Shalach, and before I tell you a uh, thought on the parsha, I just wanted to uh, give you a little update on Yeshiva. As you all know, um, Mevaser has its own unique way of doing the Super Bowl, and uh, we are on the eve of the Super Bowl. This year we're doing something a little bit different. Again, Baruch Hashem, the base medrash is rocking, so I feel guilty, guilty, guilty when we pull the guys out of the base medrash. Um, but this year, Baruch Hashem, I think it's going to really work well. Um, first of all, you know those boxes? Everyone gets a box. You know what I'm talking about? You probably do. So we are giving, uh, giving out boxes to the guys. Anyone who keeps their Siddharim perfectly on Sunday, Arab, morning Seder, night Seder, afternoon Seder, morning Seder, afternoon Seder, night Seder, gets a box. Um, and then um, in terms of the, uh, the prizes, first quarter, second, third, second quarter, third quarter, the boxes are going to be Sparim. And then fourth quarter, the end of the game box, the winner gets a shot. So that's very exciting, and that'll help us generate energy and certainly be mechazik of base matters. Then the ticket into the Super Bowl, into the game in the Chadarochel, is post night state of learning, a full rock solid 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. learning the base matters, everyone there. And then Chef Yonatan is going to be down there, a great spread, a good time. And then we made a big push this year that um, we're going to actually shoot for at least a quasi-morning set. It'll be optional, but all the rabbi will be here in the morning, and hopefully there'll, have, there'll be a kol Torah in the base matters in the morning, so we're very, very excited about that. Amir Hashem, Sunday, Monday is going to be very, very strong. Then we have our Elatil, and all is well. We're also looking forward to the Alumni Shabbaton next Shabbos. I'll be flying to the States Motze Shabbos, and looking forward to seeing many of you in the coming weeks. Bez Hashem. Thought on um, Parshas B'Shalach. So we've been reading, sorry, not Parshas B'Shalach, Parshas Bo. Parshas Bo. Um, so we've been reading uh, the f- past few weeks, Shmos Ba'era Bo, Eser Makos. And in this week, we're hitting the climax, but Makas Bechoros, getting ready for Yitzhak Mitzrayim. But we get to Perakid Bays, and Perakid Bays is a break in the action. And all of a sudden, before we continue with the Eser Makos, HaChodesh Hazeh Lochem, Rosh Chodeshim, we have the mitzvah, the first mitzvah of Kiddush HaChodesh, and then Bnei Yisrael is given the Karban Pesach, the command of the Karban Pesach, and it's a little bit interesting, why in the middle of the Yasser Makos Karban Pesach? It's quite, quite clear from Chazal, Chazal developed the idea at great, great length, that the Karban Pesach was Bnei Yisrael's get out of jail free card. You do the mitzvah of Karban Pesach, you do the mitzvah of Mila, that's your ticket out of Mitzrayim. And certainly after 210 years of slavery, after persecution and subjugation, Klal Yisrael is really, is Avadim. Their fathers were Avadim, their grandfather, great-grandfather, seven generations, Evid after Evid after Evid. That Evid mentality had to be broken. And the way to do so, Chazal teach us, was through the mitzvah of Karban Pesach. Chazal tell us, take a look. At Rashi, Shmos, Peregid Beis, Pasuk Chav Aleph, B'nai Yisrael was on the Memtes Shari Tuma. They were involved in Avodah Zar in Mitzrayim. And therefore, Karban Pesach, we're told, was not just a mitzvah of, as other Karbanos, V'hikrivu, V'hikravtem, but it's a mitzvah, K'hu u'mishchu lachem tzom. Take for yourself, but a lashon of Meshicha, pull back, withdraw. Why withdraw? Rashi says, citing the Mechilta, withdraw from the Avodah Zara that is on your hands. One of the reasons Chazal tell us it was a seh specifically is because the mazel, the zodi- zodiac force, the astrological force of Mitzrayim was represented by the tleh, by the seh, by the lamb. This was the representation of the Mitzri pagan god. Why did the Mitzrim hate Ro'et Son so much? We found in the beginning of, uh, at the end of Sefer Bracious, Mitzrayim does not, is not into, Paro's not into Ro'et Son because the Ro'et Son were taking this representation of the Mitzri God and were shechting it, making business with it. That was antithetical to what Mitzrayim was all about. So therefore we're told, take their God, grab it on Yud Nisan, hold it for four days, tie it to the bedposts, as the Mishnais and Taharos teach us. They'll cry out, the sheep, the, the lamb is crying out, the Mitzrim have nothing to do about it. Then take it on your dalit. Take a zachar, a strong animal. One year old without any mumen. The Chizkuni says, a strong animal in the middle of the day, the Mitzrim will be powerless to do anything about it. Shecht it in the middle of the day. And then, after the shechita, after the shechita, you'll take that behema and you'll roast it. 
and we have a lot of halachos that the, we're told apply to carbon Pesach, you have to roast it, you have to consume it, not eat anything when the roasting has to be done, not chopped into pieces, but rosho al kraav, it has to be a spit entered into the animal, roasted whole, cannot be mevushal, cannot be cooked, cannot be eaten raw, and many halachos, and if you're left over, you violated the of Nosar, it all has to be burnt. So what exactly is the idea over here? So it's a beautiful, beautiful maharal. The maharal says, why roast it? Why specifically roast it? Why can't it be cooked? So when you think and you contrast the difference in the cooking process between roasting on the one hand and cooking on the other, what does roasting do? So first of all, the mitzvah is rosho al kra'av. It has to be roasted whole, which means you can see the form of the animal. You can still see that it's a set. So you're taking that mitzri god, you're killing it, you're slaughtering it. Now you're roasting it whole. So the mitzvah are there, they can see what's happening. And you're totally subjugating the representation of mitzri power. What's the fragrance when you roast something? It's a very powerful smell. The smelling of roasted meat is very, very alluring. It's very strong, much stronger than cooked meat. Says the Maral and other Mepharshim as well, that the Mitzrim smelled the waft of their God being destroyed, being consumed. And again, that gives strength to Klal Yisrael and is another element of the defeat of Mitzrayim. Finally, says the Maharal, when you cook something, first of all, you break it up into small pieces. You cook it, in the water, it starts to soften, it starts to expand, it starts to crumble. When you roast something, the exact opposite happens. It starts to toughen, it starts to shrink, shrink, and it starts to be stronger, harder. And indeed, that's the internal message to Knesset Yisrael, is as part of this process of growth, B'nai Yisrael has to become toughened up. You're no longer slaves. HaChodesh Hazed, this month, is Lachem. What does it mean, Lachem? So you take a look at those zodiac calendars, the pagan astrological symbols. So Nisan was a time where the Tlet is the simon, is the symbol of Nisan. So this was the Mitzri month. Indeed, the Archa Shulchan says in Simen Tuf Chaf Tes, Halacha Beis, that basically after Barad, Paro had enough. Leave, get out of here. After Arba, he wants them out, he can't handle it anymore. And then a couple of months pass, Choshech, and all of a sudden, Paro has a new resolve. And the Yorcha Shulchan says that new resolve is because the month of Nisan, springtime, where the Mazal Tle was in power, that astrological force, you know what? Now it's my month. Now it's our time, says Paro. He's reinvigorated, he has a new resolve. And all of a sudden, Hashem says, no, no, no. HaChodesh Hazeh Lachem. This month is yours, Klal Yisrael. This is the month, this is your time, where you have to step up and you can te- defeat, defeat Paro. Roasting of the carbon Pesach, you have to harden yourself. You have to become more resolute, stronger. That's going to be your ticket out. No Bishel. When it comes to Bishel, that's a softening. That's a crumbling. Not for us. For us, we have to strengthen ourselves, develop resolve. And then we eat the carbon Pesach. There's a mitzvah of shechting. There's a separate mitzvah of achila, two stages. It's not enough just to kill the mitzvah God. It has to be totally annihilated, totally destroyed. And if you couldn't finish it, you couldn't get it all done, so then it has to be burnt until it's ash, until it's absolutely nothingness. That is the mitzvah of carbon Pesach. It breaks up the Eser Makos because... That's going to be our ticket out. We had to have this mitzvah, not just an accumulation of mitzvahs, but a specific mitzvah. A mitzvah that will give us the strength and that will allow us to defeat Mitzrayim. Not be, not be scared, not be inhibited, not be a defeated people, but be a people of, res- of resolve, of power, of strength. And as we find ourselves, sometimes we're in the workplace, in a Goyish environment, in a Gentile environment, we have various challenges as we live in a Gentile society. And I think the lesson of the Karben Pesach is a very, very strong lesson. A lesson that if we're really to succeed. So we have to go ahead and where it's important, where we need to step up, we have to step up. We have to be ourselves, 
be resolute, not be inhibited by being who we're supposed to be, who we are. Perhaps that's the message of Karban Pesach. Perhaps that's a ticket out of Golis. It's that when we're in a hostile world and the world is against us, yes, sometimes we have to be political. Sometimes we have to be politically correct. We have to be careful. And sometimes we have to be resolute, stick to our guns, have that inner strength, that inner fortitude to go ahead and look at our enemies in the eye and say, we can defeat you. We can succeed. That's the lesson of the Karban Pesach, something that I think is very, very relevant in our days today as well. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>